Hey everybody, it's Alma. Welcome back to Keto Meets Menopause. Hey, hey, hey. Hey everybody, it's Alma. So you guys know that June 1st is going to be the kickoff to no artificial sweeteners, limited sugar alcohols, and of course, no real sugar. So why am I doing this? I'm doing this because I want to prove or disprove whether this is my weakest link within my ketogenic journey to see if maybe, like many of the articles say, that perhaps there is a correlation to maybe lack of weight loss and or weight gain due to artificial sweeteners. So I've always kind of steered away from talking about the technical aspect of the ketogenic way of eating. I'm gonna to talk to you guys from a layman's perspective, from a female perspective, and the way that I interpret it and the way that I've always uh, thought about artificial sweeteners and sugar alcohol. So, so I'm gonna just kind of group it all together and just for now refer to them as sugar substitutes, whether it's a sugar alcohol or a natural and or a uh, sugar substitute, artificial sweetener. All right, so we're just gonna say that it is a sugar substitute. By the way, so if you guys are interested in joining in our month of no artificial sweeteners slash sugar alcohols, in the description is a link to the Facebook group. Please feel free to go ahead and join it. All right, I've always thought of them as O's, O's, eights, and A's. All right, grouped into all the things of semi no no's and no-no's. All right, so let me go ahead and explain that. Now the O's are sugar alcohols. Why? Think of the word alcohol. Ends in an O-L. Virtually all of your sugar alcohols also end with the O-L-S. Here's the item. So you'll think about xylitol. You'll think about sorbitol. You'll think about erythritol. Maltitol. You'll think about mannitol. Of course, there's more. I'm just giving you some of the big things that are out there. So give all of those sugar alcohols and we'll talk about glycemic index response to those items in a little bit. Here, so here's the deal, guys. So in recent years, and it, it's not even recent, I think that we all just got into the habit of saying, oh, it's a sugar alcohol, let's zap it from our net carbs. I'm guilty of that, all right? Some of the sugar alcohols actually have more carbohydrates than others, which would mean it would affect your glycemic index, glycemic response, insulin response differently. So you really shouldn't just sit there and say globally, Ixnay on those carbs, all right? It really needs to be looked at a little deeper. And let's look at it this way. So you're um, looking at a lovely little uh, protein bar. Protein bar says, I have seven carbs, all right? I have two of those as dietary fiber, and I have three of those as sugar alcohols. You're like, yay, I get a Zephos 5 right on my carb count, and I now have two net carbs. Give me three of those protein bars, right? Six, I'm good for the day. All right, guys, not really. So what they're saying is, depending on what that item is, if it's erythritol, you can just pretty much say, I'm gonna wipe out all of the carbs from sugar alcohols. But they're saying virtually everything else, you should really only consider half of those carbs being reduced from your carb count. So that means if you ate those three things, what you were saying was, six net carbs for three of them. Now saying, okay, I really have to add one and a half carbs back to each of those three lovely bars. So that now takes your net carb count to 10 and a half. Yeah, so guys, 10 and a half carbs for three things? All right guys, so how much room do you really have left for your veggies? And if you're a person that sneaks in some berries, you certainly don't have room for any berries. Think about those wonderful ice creams they have out there are really, may be taking us above, even further ahead on our carb count. All right, so let's say you're eating 720 sugar alcohols and you removed it. The rest of the numbers aren't gonna matter at this point. You know that at least 10, if you're basing it on what they do for the diabetic community and elsewhere, you know that 10 of those carbs, in order to not create an insulin response, should be considered in your overall count. So you've now had 10 carbs for your day. Again, that doesn't leave a lot of room for the good healthy carbs. So this is why I'm saying sugar alcohols really need to be excluded for this month. Just this month only, let's just see what happens. So if the scale moves, we're gonna all know that maybe those sugar alcohols aren't the best thing. Now again, I am gonna put a disclaimer saying erythritol is okay. So the scale is zero to 100 for the glycemic index. That means if you're at zero, then that item that you're eating or ingesting is gonna have less of a response against your insulin. If you're at 100, you know, woohoo, you're on a sugar high, honey. All right, so let's look at that. A zero 
is erythritol. That's why I'm saying for the month of June, erythritol should be accepted. Let me tell you where some of the other items um, fare up with the glycemic index. So sorbitol has a score of nine. Now sorbitol is in plenty of your drinks out there. Usually uh, your uh, sports drinks have uh, sucralose and or sorbitol in it. So again, don't want to do it. It's then you have xylitol. Where's xylitol? You'll find xylitol in virtually all of the gum out there. Xylitol, where does it fall? A 12. Then we have maltitol. Again, another item that is all over the uh, energy bars, especially a lot of the protein bars again. That has a glycemic index response of a 45, guys. That's almost halfway. We are saying sugar alcohols are safe. Not everything is not created equal in the sugar alcohol world. That was malitol. Now, mannitol uh, supposedly has a zero response to it. So, but I don't know. I don't see that in a lot of things. So there's just a few of the items that I would say watch out for. This is why I'm saying on this month of June, let's stick as far as sugar alcohols to Daisy wins my hand. Um, so that is why I'm saying let's stick to erythritol. It is a zero on the glycemic index response. And so I think it should be fairly safe. All right, so next let's talk about um, sugar and sugar substitutes or what I like to call the oses, all right, of the world. So I've always remembered it, the ose as in high fructose, or which used to be on every single label of those lovely little juices. I use lovely in a very sarcastic manner. Uh, so you're talking about glucose, fructose, dextrose, uh, sucralose, xylose, maltose, isomaltose, and more guys. So those are some of the items that you're gonna look at. So those are all things like, again, the month of June, we say no to, all right? A lot of people will look at sucralose, which is Splenda, and they use that on a daily basis. Not right now. If you look at Splenda, and those big fluffy bags that they sell at the grocery store that says Splenda, it's great for baking, it's low carb, guess what? It's nice and fluffy, that bag. Why? Because they're using a bulking agent. What's that bulking agent? Maltodextrin. And well, again, we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. And there's also the plant-based. And most of those are considered to be monk fruit as well as stevia. So stevia, monk fruit, and erythritol. Those are gonna be the three items that we're approving to use during the month of June. Just because it says stevia, just because it says monk fruit, just because it says erythritol does not mean that it's 100%, guys. Check the label. I was out last night looking at liquid drops. Liquid drops. They actually said maltodextrin in it. So make sure you're checking these labels. And on the stevia, guys, um, I am not as well educated on the difference between the ones that have alcohol and the ones that don't have alcohol. So if you can help educate me on that, that'd be great. Okay, so now the non-nutritive ones. In that same category of non-nutritives actually come in the plants. Stevia, monk fruit, actually comes in the sugar alcohol, erythritol, and saccharin, it brings in aspartame, it brings in allotane, a whole list of things. So those are all things like, again, the month of June, we say no to. Again, there'll be a file in the uh, file section of the Facebook group. It's such a confusing topic. And you could say, oh, it's really not confusing, don't use it. You're right. That makes it very, very easy to say, it's not confusing, don't do it. A lot of people say, hey, it's a freebie. It's a zero on the glycemic index. It is zero calorie. I'm keeping it in my diet. Last night I was thinking about how to fight that argument. And the argument is, guys, there's lots of reports saying it's not healthy. And then I immediately thought of cigarettes and I don't mean to offend anybody that smokes, but I think even smokers will say it's bad for your health. It's zero calorie, but it's still bad for your health. Perhaps my beautiful aspartame falls into that same category. It's just bad for my health. So, <clears throat> all right guys, let's now talk about maltodextrin. Maltodextrin, you're gonna find everywhere. When you're using little packets of um, white taco seasoning, you're gonna find it there. When you eat a candy bar, you're gonna find it there. You're, when you eat pork rinds, flavored pork rinds, you're gonna find it there. So guys, check your label. Most of the flavored pork rinds are gonna be acceptable. I will show you a list of the items that are acceptable though. So in your ketogenic way of eating, would you ever have brown sugar? I can't imagine having it ever, right? So brown sugar on the glycemic index is a 65, all right? So if you're looking at a scale of zero to 100, 100 would be the worst, you would never introduce brown sugar into your way of eating, right? All right, maltodextrin while you're eating the pork rinds, the flavored and delicious pork rinds, 
you know what the glycemic in index is on that? It's anywhere from 85 to 120. So it goes off that scale of 100. So guess what? Uh, by the end of the day, if you've had 50 total carbs and you've had items that have maltodextrin in it, like those little bitty powdered drinks that have maltodextrin in it, you're probably out of ketosis at this point. So if you're not testing and measuring your ketones, you're probably out of ketosis and that's gonna explain why you're not losing weight at that point. So guys, maltodextrin, if you see it, give the product away. Put it back on the shelf. Donate it, dispose of it. However you wanna do it. If you wanna donate it, if you wanna give it away, if you put it in the trash, put it back on the shelf, whatever. Get rid of it for the month of June. Don't torture your body with it in the month of June. All right, guys? So there we go. We, that's a quick summary of the OLS, sugar alcohols, the OSIS, the sugar substitutes, and the AIMS, and the AIDS, and everything else that falls under the non-nutritive, which is zero calorie. If you have questions, feel free to ask. I, so if you're wanting to join us for the month of June where we're not taking in any of our sugar substitutes other than stevia, erythritol, the monk fruit, then go ahead and join the Facebook group. Uh, there will be a link in the description. And best of luck for the month of June for all of us. All right, guys, have a blessed day. See you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for allowing me to spend time with you. If you haven't already done so, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification button so that you'll know each time I, I post a new video. All right, guys, have a great day. Bye-bye. Choice Wednesday, it's Onito. Now here's my wife, the DJ's Tito. Pork rinds, pork rinds, rah, rah, rah. Carbohydrates, carbohydrates, blah, blah, blah.